Hello there, you're watching COVID-360. I'm Sneha Murdani. Today, our focus is on India's next big challenge, that of black fungus and also white fungus. Up ahead on the show, we will tell you why we need to go beyond the binary discussion on misuse of steroids as the reason behind black fungus. That is not the only reason. Also on the show, how to identify a patient suffering from black fungus. First up, a top story. There are cases of black fungus being seen in those who are not on steroids. So, is mucomycosis a hospital-acquired infection? And is the wrong use of zinc supplements also a reason behind a spike in cases of black fungus? Experts say the government must explore all the reasons and that the blame on steroids is disproportionate. Are hospital infections a huge concern with the growing epidemic of black fungus or mucomycosis cases in India? Yes, says the Union Health Ministry, issuing a detailed set of guidelines directing states to review their preparedness for infection prevention and control in hospitals. Union Health Secretary Rajesh Bhushan has written to states to implement specific actions to ensure infection control in COVID-19 hospitals as per national guidelines for infection and control in healthcare facilities. The ministry has reiterated the need for meticulous adherence to infection prevention and control while managing COVID-19 patients on steroid treatment with comorbidities. Emphasis should be laid on surveillance of healthcare associated infections with focus on ventilator associated pneumonia, catheter associated bloodstream infection, catheter associated urinary tract infection, surgical site infections and gastrointestinal outbreaks. The directions come in the backdrop of Health Ministry making black fungus notifiable and making it mandatory for states to report both suspected and confirmed cases to the integrated district surveillance system. Some of the hypotheses include maybe it is the supply of industrial oxygen which might be the reason. May only the presence of comorbidities might be you know, predisposing uh, patients at a higher risk to mucomycosis. Uh, irrespective of what the hypothesis is, a competent mycologist, an expert in fungal infections, and uh, a team of biomechanical engineers together should be able to investigate and find the what uh, actual causes. Only then we'll be able to reduce the burden. Simply scaling up antifungal treatment cannot address uh, the issue in totality. There also could be a possible link between zinc supplements and a spike in cases of black fungus. Inadvertent pumping in too much zinc could be contributing to this epidemic. We should look to see if there are environments that are favorable for the virus to grow in the body. One such environment is the presence of metals such as zinc and iron. Fungi love zinc. And in fact, our body's defense against fungi is to keep zinc out of reach of the fungus. By giving zinc supplements for whatever reason, we are providing an environment that is rich in zinc. Whether this translates into increased growth of fungus and whether this increased growth leads to greater risk of mucormycosis needs to be investigated. Medical experts by and large are now asking for a detailed and thorough investigation into reasons behind surge of cases of black fungus or mucomycosis in the country. They in fact are suggesting that the blanket use of zinc supplements could be one of the reasons driving up the surge. The role of metals in fungal virulence is yet to be assessed. It remains to be seen whether the Indian Council of Medical Research reacts to these suggestions or looks into these suggestions. In New Delhi, Sneha Mordani for India Today. Steroids misuse, is that the reason for black fungus outbreak in India? Yes, but it is only one of the many reasons. Doctors say right from the quality of oxygen to the kind of mask we are wearing, all of them have a role to play in increase in cases of black fungus.
A rare fungal infection called mucomycosis or black fungus has suddenly surged in India in patients suffering or recovering from COVID-19. That is rare, but it can kill as well. Mucomycosis or black fungus is caused by a mold called mucormycetes. It is everywhere, say experts. It lives in soil, plants or decaying organic matter, in spoiled breads of fruits and mostly in drip pans of air conditioners. The infection is rare, but recently there has been a surge. Experts are now saying that steroids are being blamed, but they are only a part of the problem. The unhygienic and dirty way of delivering oxygen to patients in many places in India is the main reason. The cylinders in which the liquid oxygen is stored, transported and used are rigorously cleaned and disinfected. This did not happen when cases soared and demand for oxygen increased and industry oxygen was given instead of medical oxygen. Humidification using dirty water is also a reason. We are using non-rebreathing mask and lots of people in this second wave being treated at home. So they are using non-rebreathing mask, but they are not doing sterile, uh, they are not using sterile conditions. And the third cause might be that uh, humidifier, uh, that air, the water which is used in those humidifiers, they are used uh, from the tap water. In spite of the tap water, we can use uh, the sterile water that is, uh, uh, that can reduce the uh, number of cases which we are seeing in the mucormycosis or the black fungus. Prolonged use of steroids is just one reason and disproportionate blame is what experts are warning us against. In COVID, it's affecting mostly poorly controlled diabetics who've had high doses of steroids for longer than 7 to 10 days. The other factors causing it are poor orodental hygiene, long and sometimes unnecessary courses of antibiotics and prolonged oxygen therapy, especially in unhygienic conditions. That means dirty masks, tubes, water sources and uncertified oxygen cylinders. Medical experts say that the real solution now is to ensure hygienic and the right way of producing, supplying, distributing and using medical oxygen. We certainly have to look at the way we are using the steroids, given the fact that misuse is obviously leading to cases of black fungus. But also, we need to be extremely cautious about the use of antifungal medications as well, because they can be extremely toxic. In New Delhi, Sneha Mordani for India Today. Well, I spoke with top doctors and what the other reasons of a spike in black fungus cases could be and what should the government do now. Take a look. And joining me now are Dr. Arvinder Singh Soin. He is the chairperson of Institute of Liver Transplantation, Medanta Hospital in Gurgaon. Dr. Rajiv Jayadevan is the former president of the Indian Medical Association. And Dr. A.K. Singh is an endocrinologist, GD Hospital and Diabetes Institute. Thank you all for your time here. There is a lot of conversation about black fungus in the country and it appears that there needs to be much more understanding, Dr. A.K. Singh, to understand what the reasons are for this sudden spike in cases of black fungus that we're seeing. The sense really is that there is a bit of disproportionate blame on steroids when it comes to the spike in cases of mucomycosis. Well, uh, thank you, Sneha, for having me in this program. Well, so... You know, mucormycosis is otherwise an uh, extremely rare disease, uh, you know, prior to even COVID-19. However, uh, mucormycosis, uh, if you look the global scenario and epidemiology of mucormycosis, India has the highest number of mucormycosis in the world, even before COVID-19. Mm. So in other words, you can say that mucormycosis, you know, India is the diabetes capital of the mucormycosis. Hmm. Nevertheless, uh, it wasn't, you know, observed during the first uh, wave of COVID-19, but during the second wave, suddenly we are getting a steep rise in, uh, you know, uh, notifying from the various corners across the country that, uh, you know, doctors across the board are really getting the case of mucormycosis. 
Yes. Now, question is, what could be the reason uh, as to why we are having size in mucor mycosis in the country? Well, as we all know that uh, there is a known association of uh, mucor mycosis with someone who had diabetes and in particular uncontrolled diabetes. We also knew that someone who were taking a steroids for a longer period of time, for example, someone having an organ transplant, Dr. Swine knows, uh, you are receiving a long-standing steroid. Uh, there was some association. But then, having said that, uh, you know, we, we did not see such an increase uh, in mucormycosis. So what can this be spike be attributed to? Uh, you know, Dr. Arvinder Singh Soin, uh, I've spoken with you earlier, and you did seem to suggest that there could be many other reasons uh, apart from steroid misuse or prolonged use, which is unnecessary, isn't it? So, uh, Sneha, there are clearly many factors at play here. Uh, one of them is uncontrolled diabetes, like Dr. Singh has just said. Hmm. The other is uh, excessive use of steroids. And of course, steroids are life-saving for severe COVID. We all understand that. But sometimes they're overused and they're used for much longer periods than necessary. And what happens with steroids is that pushes the blood sugars further up. In diabetics, even in non-diabetics, it can push up blood sugar. So diabetes and steroids are uh, the main reasons, but then there are other reasons like uh, unhygienic oxygen therapy, which means uh, dirty masks, tubes, water that's used for humidification, uh, concentrators, and even cylinders from spurious sources. So all these can create the uh, environment for the fungus to grow. Poor orodental hygiene excessive use of uh, antibiotics so sometimes intravenous antibiotics carry on in these patients for a long time and often unnecessarily so these are all factors why muca can happen mm -hmm. and uh, i've actually published two papers on muca before covid came in um, and we've seen uh, you know mucormycosis among immunosuppressed patients earlier and clearly this time with covid the covid itself is causing a suppression in immunity with the diabetes and all the other factors I just listed out, we are seeing a surge of mucormycosis. You know, Dr. Rajiv Jayadevan, you in fact have spoken about the fact that uh, there is a link clearly between metals like zinc, for example, and the spike in cases of mucormycosis. Do explain to our viewers what is the link that has been drawn between a possible misuse or overuse of zinc supplements and a spike in cases of black fungus? Yes, as Dr. Soin and Dr. Singh said, we know the basics about mucormycosis. But the problem here is <clears throat> we we appear to be missing something. There is a what is that question here? Is it an additional uh, medication that these people are on, or is it an additional environmental factor which has not been described yet? So we need to keep a broad net. We need to keep the net as wide as possible so we don't let the culprit escape. So while searching for such factors, we must look at factors that, in fact, promote fungus growth. What are these factors? One particular factor that is, <clears throat> excuse me, impressive is uh, the presence of trace metals, for example, zinc and iron. Now, iron does not seem to play much of a role here for various reasons, but zinc is very interesting in that our human cells or mammalian cells or even vertebrate cells they survive by keeping zinc out of reach of an invading fungus mm -hmm. in other words the fungus wants zinc and we won't give it to survive okay okay it gets hold of zinc the fungus grows well and in fact as you know fungi have a lot of industrial use and they they are grown in zinc rich media so the the question is there is widespread use, empiric use of zinc supplements. The question is, are such people more likely? It is not an assertion. It is just a question. So mm -hmm. I'm sure when they look at all the data, put all the data on the table with an open mind, we'll have to see what is the clear differentiating factor between people who unfortunately suffered this disease and compare them to an equal number or a greater number of exactly similar patients who have COVID-19 but did not get the outcome. And that's how you come up with conclusions. Dr. Singh, do you think it's time for the Indian Council of Medical Research and the Government of India, the Ministry of Health, to look into the manner in which there is 
there has been indiscriminate use of zinc supplements and especially in this pandemic given the possible links that are now being drawn well uh, you know sneha uh, although while we all are discussing about possible association of you know unhygienic nasal tubes oxygen cylinders but you know i i am sorry that i beg to state here and my thoughts are you know completely different from other my panelists here mm. it's very unlikely that uh, you know a humidifier or an unhygienic uh, you know oxygen cylinder could lead to mucormycosis you can hypothesize it but then please remember that mucormycosis caused by rhizopus is a fungus which is a micro aerophilic fungi they don't actually like oxygen so in a you know high oxygen environment in the tube mucor has never been grown in the past it's slightly candidal or aspergillus fungal infection which is pretty mm -hmm. common because okay. they are oblique require so although you can hypothesize that it is it may be because of unhygienic humidifier or you know repeated use of mask but mucor is a very vip fungus it doesn't come in the simple way as the other you know fungus candida or spirillus grass second the zinc theory i agree with dr jaydevan partially that zinc has been associated with the various fungal growth but then mucor mycosis perhaps is the exception to the rule okay. so you know at in one hand we can speculate that it may be zinc but what is actually known is the iron in a high iron environment there is a increase of mucor mycosis and i have wrote in my paper and zinc uh, you know many of the zinc preparation which is available in indian market is already containing iron so i should we should look for whether it is iron or it is zinc or it is combined everything is a hypothesis of course you know the medical council of india line especially with steroid use please remember that the steroid is indicated only in the severe case requiring oxygen but we are seeing a rampant use of the steroid multiple types of steroid in a given patient i still think that the steroid is the main culprit okay but main yes, culprit is steroid mind, okay. Should, yeah okay uh, you know uh, dr soin your thoughts as far as a link between metals and the spike in cases of mucormycosis is concerned because we all know that uh, the government and even doctors all through the pandemic have been suggesting use of zinc supplements uh, and do you see a possible link between the two sir I don't see any scientific mm. evidence of a link. Okay. I mean, yes, there can be hypotheses because uh, there are industrial processes where zinc is used and it's associated with fungus, but that cannot be extrapolated to human disease, I'm afraid. Mm. So I think that unless data is looked at, all the various factors are looked at and a multivariate analysis is done as to the causative factor, we should not really be looking at metals or trace metals as a cause of uh, this infection. I think what's staring us in the face is something that we should pay attention to and that is steroids and diabetes because I've okay. seen mucor before before covid and I've never seen it in patients who are not immunosuppressed and or don't have diabetes. Okay, Dr. Rajiv uh, Jayadevan, your thoughts on that because this is something that's been reported from many other parts of the country also. Patients who've never been on steroids are having black fungus right now also in the hindsight. The manner in which industrial oxygen was used, especially in places like Delhi for example, where industrial oxygen was being procured by private individuals being kept at home and used in the way it was being used it sits not even the purified version of oxygen. that is something that could have led to this major problem uh, dr jaydevan goes i've heard from experts hmm. um even outside this panel that oxygen um, the presence of oxygen uh, in fact discourages the uh, the growth of fun fungus so let 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 that be aside for a moment but having talked with doctors who treat mucormycosis uh, across the country what is concerning is that there are people who are younger and who are not diabetic and who have apparently normal sugars who are coming down with this disease so we need to look at all the information which is why i said it's important not to jump into a conclusion here we know that steroid use definitely is a wrong thing in terms of if you use too much or for too long or for the wrong patient definitely that's a given but the question is 
are there other factors why are people who are not diabetic coming down with this and are and how many are they are coming down so we need to we have around 8000 okay. cases report we need to have all that data the big picture it's premature to jump into conclusions prior to that all right. Dr. Rajiv Jayadevan, thank you for your time and thanking Dr. Arvinder Singh Soin as well as Dr. A.K. Singh for joining us with their perspective on that important story. By and large, the consensus really is that the government has to go beyond looking at just the role of steroids, misuse of prolonged and necessary use of steroids, in, in which, which could be leading to one of the reasons actually which could be leading to an increase in cases of black fungus. Doctors are talking about more reasons that could be behind this major spike of black fungus cases that we are seeing in the country right now. Thank you all for your time. Over 9,000 cases of mucomycosis and counting. As India is battling this epidemic, science and data could hold the key to understanding the infection, assuming epidemic proportions. Could steam be the reason or India's hot, humid climate be a factor? I tell you what the studies around this have indicated up until now. Several studies have been done around black fungus, each one of them opening up a plethora of possibilities surrounding this infection. The first series on black fungus mucomycosis done by Professor V.P. Pandey in Indore on 210 patients. Interestingly, it reveals while antibiotics was used in 100% patients, steroids, the suspected culprit behind the increase in cases of this infection, was used only in 14% of the patients. 21% of them were not even diabetic. Interestingly, zinc supplement intake was not checked. Clearly, there are factors beyond steroid use and diabetes here. The obvious question is, what are the forms of treatment did these patients receive? Experts are now even saying excessive steam inhalation, a widespread practice in India, could be one of the reasons. High temperature steam in large amounts taken excessively can damage the mucosa or the lining of the airways. And this has already been documented. One must be careful in doing over enthusiastic as steam inhalation. Burns cost 10 to 20% of past mucomycosis in India, say experts. Trauma to skin or mucous membrane can trigger invasive fungal infection in the right settings. Experts are now saying that potential offenders that must be looked for in studies is the concurrent use of antibiotics which is not required in viral infections like COVID-19, azithromycin, doxycycline, even carbapenems are seen on prescriptions. Antibiotics are known to increase the risk of fungal infections. Predictors of hospital-acquired bacterial and fungal superinfections in COVID-19, a prospective observational study done by Professor Marco Falcone from Italy, University of Pisa says the same. Also, a research paper called Epidemiology of Mucomycosis in India says that incidence of mucomycosis has over the years increased in the country. This has been published in the medical journal Microorganisms. It says that the computational model-based method estimated a prevalence of 14 cases per 1 lakh individuals in India. The incidence seems to have grown amid the COVID-19 pandemic. The black fungus infections went up 2.5 times last year between September and December across 16 centres in the country. Another research, Diabetics and Metabolic Syndrome, suggests the unholy trinity of diabetes, rampant use of corticosteroid, along with COVID-19 that appears to increase the occurrence of mucomycosis, a rare black fungus infection. In this paper, we have collated data of all the cases of mucomycosis in the world, uh, starting from beginning of the COVID-19 epidemic. We have found 101 cases, out of which 82 cases are from India. So India already, before COVID-19, India already had a lot more cases of COVID-19 than the rest of the world. There are further highlights from this paper. Number one, that it is seen more in males, 80% in the males. Also, 
Steroids are much talked about, but the steroids were not given in all the patients. Only 80% of the patients received steroid, 20% did not. Diabetes, which is also much talked about, was present in only 80% of the cases. Also, diabetes with very severely high blood sugar, ketoacidosis was present in 15% of the cases. Mortality was noted in 30.7% of the cases. Globally, the prevalence of mucormycosis varied from 0.005 to 1.7 per million population, while its prevalence in India is 80 times higher, which is 0.14 per 1,000 in India, compared to developed countries as per a recent testament. In New Delhi, Sneha Moldani for India Today. What should one look out for if there is suspicion of black fungus infection in a patient? Here is how we all can keep an eye on this disease and prevent it from becoming severe. Well, here is the advice to the patient and caregiver for early detection of mucormycosis. Be alert if abnormal black discharge or crust of blood from nose is seen. Nasal blockage is reported. Headache or eye pain is being seen or swelling around the eyes, double vision, redness of eye, loss of vision, difficulty in closing the eye, inability to open the eye, prominence of eye, facial numbness or tingling sensation, difficulty in chewing or opening of mouth is being seen. There should be regular self-examination, a full face examination in the daylight for facial swelling, especially around the nose, cheek and around the eye of black discoloration, hardening and pain on touch, or loosening of teeth, black areas and swelling inside the mouth, palate, teeth or nose, which is oral and nasal examination using torchlight as far as possible as you can see. If you sense something is amiss, then ensure immediate consultation with the ENT doctor or treating doctor in case of any abnormal findings. Regular treatment and follow-ups as advised and strict control and monitoring of blood sugar and diabetics must be done. Regular medications and follow-up for other comorbidities. No self-medications with steroids or antibiotics or antifungal drugs. MRI, CT with contrast, paranasal sinuses and orbit if needed on doctor's advice only. That's it from me in this edition of COVID-360. Until next time, be safe, stay well. Thanks for watching.